Hello guys, it's Shitkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today I bring you a new video. Today's video is about a CPU comparison, thing that I haven't done in quite some time, let's say over 6 months. So the today's comparison is Ryzen 3 3100, recently launched, versus the Ryzen 5 3600. Now, some of you may say that this video is not useful at all, I disagree. I disagree mostly based in one point, which is that not all buyers look for the same or are the same or have the same objective. Thank God. For example, on a budget build, you may want to save some money in the CPU and get a bit better GPU, for example, if you're not go going to play over 60 FPS or even 75 FPS. This may also help you in the case, for example, that you don't really know what to pick and you really want to know before buying if the Ryzen 5 3600 is really worth buying over the 3100, okay? 4 cores, 8 threads versus 6 cores, 12 threads, but as we know, core count is not everything. So that's why this video was made and is being made in this moment since I'm recording it. But well guys, that's mostly it. Don't forget hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot me and the channel. And well, let's go to the part that you really really want to see right before going to the sponsor of this video. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, where you can get a Windows 10 serial key for only $17. And by using my discount code, you get a 20% off discount, making it even less, $14. After the payment, you'll receive the serial key. And to activate it, just go to your Windows settings and introduce that same key. And voila, you have an activated system for only $14. Now seriously? Let's go. Something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here? Today's first game is Remedy's Control, using the X12 and medium settings. This game is known to be heavy on the GPU side, hence the CPU not being taxed as much, and that can be seen in the results of course. Apart from 1080p, where we have a difference of 6 FPS in the 1% lows, all results are exactly the same and within the margin of error. In this particular case, both CPUs are equal and can easily achieve over 100 FPS with no problems. At least in the part I tested, of course. Moving on. The second game is the well-known Red Dead Redemption 2, using Vulkan API and custom settings, basically a mix of high and medium. In this game we can see once again that the difference is small, but it is interesting since in the side-by-side -side comparison shown before, we can see that almost every time a difference of around 10 FPS is presented. But I guess that in other parts the FPS numbers are way closer, or maybe it is just the in-game benchmark tool that isn't giving proper results, which is likely. Still the Ryzen 3 3100 can produce decent results, and the same applies for the Ryzen 5 3600 obviously.
The third game is Assassin's Creed Odyssey and we finally start seeing some differences. Apart from 4K, the differences are seen. As shown, Ryzen 3 3100 is unable to push more than 70 average FPS in this game, while the Ryzen 5 3600 can reach up to 80. In terms of 1% lows, Ryzen 3 3100 is also far behind, with around 10 FPS less, which makes all the difference in this case, since we're going from 50 FPS to around 60, and that difference will be noticed gameplay-wise. Overall, Ryzen 5 3600 is fairly superior, but for the price, Ryzen 3 3100 fares pretty well. Now we're going a bit more into online gaming with The Division 2. This game shows us interesting results and once again we can see that the average FPS numbers are not the most important thing. In this case, at 1080p we have a difference of 13 FPS in the averages, but the biggest difference is not there, but instead in the 1% lows, where we go from 106.5 FPS with Ryzen 3 3100 to 129.5 FPS with Ryzen 5 3600, meaning that with Ryzen 3 3100 you'll have drops to 106.5 FPS, while with Ryzen 5 3600 you'll have drops to only 129.5 FPS instead, which is a pretty perceivable difference if you have a high refresh rate monitor. Overall, both CPUs will completely be fine with this game, if you aren't playing over 100 FPS. Now with a full competitive game, CSGO. Now, we all know that even my fridge could run CSGO, but that's not the point. For competitive gamers, the FPS numbers will matter a lot, since they have high refresh rate panels and they also want the lowest frame time possible. The higher the FPS, the lower the frame time. Doesn't matter the monitor. In this case, we're using the benchmark map so people can test their results also, and well, the difference is not massive, but it is big. I think the difference comes from way bigger cache, which also has a play in terms of single core performance. In every resolution we have a difference of 40 average FPS or more. At 1080p we have a difference of almost 100 average FPS, and that is a lot. Overall for the usual gamer, Ryzen 3 3100 will be more than enough, but if you are looking to play a lot of CSGO, I would advise you to get at least the Ryzen 5 3600. Moving on. To continue the competitive games, we have now Rainbow Six Siege using Vulcan and medium settings. Once again, we can see a big difference between CPUs and for my own surprise, the difference gets maintained even at 4K. In this scenario, we have a difference of around 50 or more average FPS in every single resolution. And that is interesting to see indeed. Once again, if you go to competitive gaming on Rainbow Six Siege, I advise you to get the Ryzen 5 3600. But well, 
If you're playing it at your monitor's refresh rate, even if it is 144Hz, you won't have problems, even with the Ryzen 3 3100. Reaching the final phase we have Ghost Rack on Breakpoint, also using the Vulcan API. In this game we can see a massive difference at anything over 78 FPS. At 4K, since we are below that, the difference is small, even on the 1% lows. But if we look into 1080p and 1440p where we can go way over that, the difference starts to appear. We can see that the Ryzen 3 3100 can't achieve more than 150 average FPS and 70 FPS in the 1% lows, which is not a great sign. On the other hand, Ryzen 5 3600 achieves over 150 average FPS and almost 100 FPS in the 1% lows, meaning that Ryzen 5 3600 not only will grant you more average FPS, but also more gameplay smoothness since the 1% lows are also way higher. Interesting results once again. Let's move on. The last game of today is World War Z, and damn! As usual the FPS start decreasing as we go into higher resolutions, that happens because the GPU won't be able to produce as much FPS with a way higher pixel quantity, meaning that higher resolutions, the higher the resolution, the GPU bottleneck should kick in and make the CPU results be more or less the same. Interestingly enough, though. This was not the case. Even at 1620p ultra wide, which is in between 1440p ultra wide and 4K, we have a massive difference in terms of FPS. It seems that World War Z benefits a lot from more cores and more cache. Hence the difference being this big. To close the testing phase we have Cinebench R15 testing single core and multi core performance. We can see that while both CPUs use, use Zen 2 cores, the 100 MHz difference alongside with the cache difference do make Ryzen 5 3600 having an advantage in terms of single core performance, even using the same RAM kit. Once we go to multi-core performance, the results are obvious, since Ryzen 5 3600 has 6 cores 12 threads, while the Ryzen 3 3100 has 4 cores 8 threads. This all to say that, if you are looking into rendering also, encoding, or anything that really benefits from the core count at all, you want to expand a bit more and get the Ryzen 5 3600, at least to not regret about it later. Let's now go to the conclusion. So concluding guys, okay, let's take off the glasses a bit. Like always, a product serves different people. For example, if you are on a really tight, really tight budget and you're only gaming, for example, at 1080p 60 frames, or let's say 1440p 60, 30 frames with, let's say, medium settings, well, in that, uh, in that case scenario, you are most likely to get a Ryzen 3 3100 and get a bit better CPU. Because in this moment, we have a difference of around $60, 60 to $70, but usually $60 between the 3100 and the 3600. So with those $60 or $70, you can get the 3100 and get a pretty, uh, a pretty better or a decently better GPU because $70 in GPU in the GPU scaling 
is that much. So imagine, it's like the same going from, for example, a, a RX 580 to a Vega 56. The difference is massive. And those $70 will help you a lot gaming-wise, if you're not into competitive gaming, of course. But now there's another case scenario. Let's say you are indeed also on a tight budget, but you want the build to last as much as it can. And for example, let's say that you want to maintain all the build apart from the graphics card. So for example, you can get now the Ryzen, the Ryzen 5 3600 and get a bit worse GPU and later, let's say in one year, upgrade the GPU while your CPU still handles it, okay? Because, for example, if you upgrade the, the GPU later, Ryzen 3 3100 may not be able to handle it properly. So, it depends a lot. And you also have the third case scenario, which is exactly the opposite of the previous one, which is, uh, okay, you are getting a better GPU now, and later, if you have problems with newer games, apart um, in terms of CPU, of course, for example, you need more cores, then you just upgrade the CPU to a newer generation CPU. Because, for example, um, let's say you are getting the 3100. If you get, for example, a cheap X570, or let's say even a B450, you can later upgrade the BIOS and get a new uh, generation CPU, for example, the 4000 series. And as we know, 4000 series will be way better. So, for example, you can get later um, the Ryzen 5, let's say the Ryzen 5 4600, and you still maintain the, the GPU while having a better CPU later. So, it depends a lot on what you want. But in terms of price performance, yes, Ryzen 5 3600 is still the king in terms of price performance, no doubt. Ryzen 3 3100 is pretty fine once overclocked to 4.1 GHz, you can see in this video how to do it, of course. Um, but it is still not the same. It has way less cache, it has less cores, um, and it has less IPC. But yeah, of course, it all depends in what you want, not me, not the people around you, in what you want, and what you want to do later or now in your build. If you want the performance right now, get the Ryzen 5 3600, of course. If you are on a tight budget and want a better GPU first, get the Ryzen 3 3100 and get a better GPU because, well, in most case scenarios, a better GPU will, al will always be better since the Ryzen 3 3100, once overclocked, is pretty damn nice. It's pretty damn nice for the price. I bought mine for 82 euros, which will be roughly, let's say, $90, $95. So for that price, the Ryzen 3 3100 is a killer deal. But for the prices we are seeing now, you better get the 3300X or, of course, the Ryzen 5 3600. And well, guys, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. And see you in the next video.